Gene therapy uses a genetic approach to change a gene that is causing a disease. In sickle cell disease, gene therapy currently uses a person's own blood forming stem cells, which have been modified in a lab to compensate for a genetic mutation by making a normal hemoglobin to reduce the amount of sickled hemoglobin in the body. In one type of gene therapy called gene addition, an extra copy of a hemoglobin gene without the variant is added to the blood forming stem cells, which then allows these cells to produce hemoglobin A, a non-sickling hemoglobin. In another approach called gene silencing, the gene that produces the BCL11A blocking protein, which inactivates hemoglobin F, is silenced by cutting the gene. By silencing this gene, the gene that makes hemoglobin F can be reactivated, which allows your cells to produce hemoglobin F, which again is non-sickling. In a third approach called gene correction, the variant in the gene that causes sickle cell disease is corrected so that it codes for a non-sickling hemoglobin. So how is gene therapy different from bone marrow transplant? When we say bone marrow transplant, we usually mean transplanting blood forming cells from someone else who does not have sickle cell disease. However, the gene therapy approaches do require a transplant, so it's sometimes confusing. In allogeneic transplantation, meaning from someone else, stem cells from another person are used. These stem cells do not code for sickle cell disease. In those with sickle cell disease, it can be hard to find someone who is a full match, meaning that their stem cells could be used in a transplant. Recently, donors who are only half matched are being used. With this type of transplant, there is a lifetime risk of rejecting the blood forming stem cells, and the recipient may have to take medication for a lifetime to reduce their risk of rejection.